waiting for him. But at least he's here. There we go. <laughs> morning Hello. or good evening. <laughs> yeah, good morning. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> okay, we made it work. Can you hear me okay? These headphones look so silly. I think I can hear you fine. I hope people will be able to hear you as well, but I think it's fine. Okay. Yeah, just because I can. Hmm? I, I can take them off. I can whatever's easiest. No, I think the sound is good for now. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Perfect. Cool. Awesome. Cool. 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 Well, I'm glad we made that work. <laughs> yes, me too. Well, thanks for um, uh, here. Let me um, close this. Yeah. So I'll introduce you real quick, even though you don't really need uh, any introduction. Um, so you're you've been around for a while. You everybody knows you uh, as one of the pioneers for mixed duets. Um, you were around. You started Synchro in 1989, right? <laughs> <laughs> a couple of years ago, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, 1989. <laughs> All right. Well, that's still. I got a lot of questions about that, but we'll get there. Um, All right. Cool. And then, yeah, you started, you did your own thing, started Mixed Away um, in the 90s. You competed at the Goodwill Games. Um, and then, of course, you got to a point where <laughs> um, where you kind of, you uh, back then, men weren't allowed at the Olympics. Um, so you retired in 2004, went to Cirque du Soleil. Um, and in 2015, you came back, you won gold in... Um, the technical mixed duet, and since you won four medals, uh, competed at three world championships, and now you're, and of course, during that whole time, you were competing with, well, you were performing with uh, Cirque du Soleil. Mm. Yeah, so how, how are you right now? How what have you been up to? <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably doing the same thing everyone else is doing, watching a lot of Netflix, eating way too much, um, but actually, I've been, um, Luckily, the, they have our parks open, so we have like a big national park that I can go to. Um, so I've been swimming. The water's freezing because even though it's still Las, it's Las Vegas, it's still, um, it's still, you know, the end of kind of our winter, beginning of our spring. So the water's pretty cold. So, but I've been still trying to swim. I've been doing some Zoom workouts uh, to try to stay in shape. So <laughs> You've been if anybody wants to come on and say hello. <laughs> I've been kicking my butt. <laughs> no, these are good. So yeah, it's you know it's 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 fun. It's it's actually this is a horrible and terrible and sad time, but a lot of people are connecting again. Um, you know, like you, it's actually nice to see really great things come out of people. Mm -hmm. So although it's a sad time, it's it's actually a really happy time to see like how great people are being to each other. No, that's good. So you're also just, um, circus, you're not working, right? It's kind of waiting to see what happens. Yeah, right. So right now, all of Las Vegas is closed. Every casino. Um, wow. yeah, like I, I, I'm pretty sure like everywhere else, like only the essential stores are open, the grocery stores, um, hospitals. Um, yeah, that's about it. And even probably the same as everywhere. Like our, there, a lot of times there's a line to wait to get into the store. Um, you have to stand six feet away from people or maybe two, about two meters. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't get to go out and see as many people as I would like, but um, it's nice seeing people on my Zoom workouts. We can chat a little bit um, and see what people are doing. And it seems like people are staying happy. And actually there's a lot of people – um, more than normal out walking. Las Vegas isn't a very kind of outdoorsy walking city, but there's so many people out with their dogs um, doing their own thing. But you see them walking down the street, getting exercise, smelling the fresh air. So it's, it's a really nice thing to see. Yeah, that's good. Well, hopefully, yeah, you stay safe and inside, I guess. <laughs> yes, for sure. You know, like everything, this will pass. Yeah. Exactly. Oh. Someone's asking uh, how can they join your Zoom workouts. 
Uh, all the information, I put it up on my Facebook a few days ago, but if you send me a message on Facebook or Instagram, I'll send you another link. Anyone's welcome to join. You know, it's nothing professional. It's nothing too difficult or, you know, too involved. It's just we get together, do some workouts together, and, you know, maybe laugh because sometimes I slip or, you know. Well, it's, it's nice. The workouts are nice. They're hard. Well, they're hard for me, but I'm not. A professional <laughs> professor, but... <laughs> But it's good though. Well, yes, I feel good afterwards. Ah, cool. Thanks. I highly recommend. Yeah. All right. Well, I got a lot of questions uh, from people. Cool. So maybe we can get started with your beginnings. Um, so a lot of people ask me, how how did you find synchronized swimming as a boy, especially and back like back then? Um, well, back then, as it was called synchronized swimming, now it's artistic swimming. Um, it kind of found me. You know, my sister did it at a local program during our winter. Um, and I thought, well, that's crazy. You know, like it's freezing right now. We only swim during the summer. But um, and then when our summer happened, she wanted to try synchronized swimming at just a little public pool. And we had done kind of speed swimming or, you know, normal swimming before. Um, so I just did it to kind of pass the time. There were some other guys doing it. Um, and at the end of the summer, um, D. O'Hare, um, she had a program called the Syracuse Synchro Cats, which was our club in Syracuse, New York. Um, and she um, asked all the people to join, and I was horrible. I was horrible. And it's funny, as I coach now, looking back to see some of these people trying to learn these things, it makes me remember thinking, gosh, I thought to myself, I would never get this. And it was as easy as thing as a walkover. You know, I thought I would never be able to get this. How do you flip your legs over your head, you know, and stay underwater and um, but yeah, so that's where my little start came in Syracuse, New York. And then I went to join the Oswego Lake Cats after the Syracuse Synchro Cats disbanded. Um, and then when I was 16, I moved to California to join the Santa Clara Aquamades. Mm -hmm. And how was it for you? I suppose you were the only, the only boy throughout your entire childhood, right? Or was there anybody else? Um, so there weren't many men. Um, I, I'd heard about a few men. And a, a man, he's kind of a, he's basically a, he's a legend, I would say, in artistic swimming. He was a, a male synchronized swimmer, and his name was Don Squire, and he had a club out in California. Mm -hmm. So I had seen him at competitions, and he was a judge at the time. Um, so he kind of mentored me and was very kind to me. He coached me a little. Um, and then there was Stefan Mirmo, who was... Um, he was a French synchronized swimmer and then he also coached in Santa Clara and he was my first um, main coach on Santa Clara along with Chris Carver. So there were some men and then my coach actually in Oswego in New York, her son um, swam for a few years mm -hmm. and he was younger than me. So I never swam with him. But um, the first time I saw any male compete was um, in 1996 at the French, um, at the French Cup in Mio, and I saw Benoit Beaufis, yeah. you know, so yeah. it, it was cool because all of a sudden there was like this camaraderie, you know, like we were both doing this with no, nothing more than a dream or like a hope that we would continue to enjoy the sport. You know, we didn't have any Olympic ambitions. Everybody wants to go to the Olympics, but it wasn't you know, it wasn't on our plate because it wasn't allowed at the time, but we continued to swim just because we truly love the sport. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, that was one of the question was like, how did you, how did you keep motivated when you were a teenager um, being in a women's sport that wasn't really known at the time either? Um, so just because you loved it, right? Yeah, I was a, I was a gymnast. And um, artistic swimming was a different style of sport for me. It was, um, it would combine gymnastics and all these other sports and music and performing. And at that time, I was so stubborn that I would never let anyone tell me that um, what I could or could not do or what I should believe or what I should dream or what I should love. Um, you know, so it was just a sport that I really enjoy doing. And people always ask, why would you do a sport where you couldn't go to the Olympics. But at that age, 
you don't ever start a sport thinking, oh, you know, tomorrow my Olympic dream is going to take place or, you know, I'm going to be a world champion. It's, you know, you walk on that swim deck or you walk on that field or into that gym and you just think, okay, you know, this is what I like to do. I love to do it. And it's so innocent at that time. You know, you're not judging people. People aren't judging you. You're just there to enjoy yourself. That was a, also a question from um, at Alithea Lizzie. Uh, do you have any advice for young boys right now doing synchro or artistic swimming? <clears throat> well, one thing I think that I think it needs to be a partnership with the coaches and with the athletes. And no, that is, it is going to be different. Like people will always have their um, preconceptions of a male in a sport that is dominated by females. And, you know, I think that you need to recognize that and not try to hide it and prepare them in a way knowing that it might be difficult, but giving support is the best thing that you can do for a male and synchronized artistic swimming, but also, um, you know, in any sport, but in artistic swimming specifically, I had a lot of support from my family and it just gave me the motivation to continue, you know? So I think if you have that strong base from your coach, from your family, it makes it easier, but also explaining to them that it will be difficult, but um, you know, your determination you know, your dreams are your dreams and supporting that dream, you know, and not try to um, hide them in as a woman in the sport, but really make them um, a power or an energy in the sport that um, that they do have a place and not try to just, you know, fill in a gap of just another athlete because male athletes are different than female athletes. Right. That's cool. Um, and Earlier, you mentioned, well, I guess, no, let's go. Let's continue on that topic. Yeah. Um, a few people asked me, do you think one day we'll see um, all male? Well, we already see them, but I guess at the international level, do you think we'll see all male teams or all male or just men being allowed just in combos to start with or anything? I definitely think that there will be men added to the teams. And, you know, I always um, – and I hope this gives an idea. I read in the rules one time, and the way I read it, um, it didn't say anything about a combo. It just said athletes. So I really wish someone would have, you know, and I don't know the rules well enough, but I really wanted to challenge that and just have someone go out and try it because combo only said athletes. It didn't say female athletes. Um, and that was a couple of years ago, so maybe the rules are changed or maybe they added um, different wording. But you know, like I just wanted someone to go out and try it, put a man on the team. And if they get disqualified, get disqualified. But in the rules, as far as I could find it, only said athletes. So yeah, to answer your question, I definitely think that they will soon add um, men to a team. In any change in any sport, it's a slow progression. Mm -hmm. But I think that, um, that you will see that. And you will see equal representation of men in the sport. If you look at you know, it's, it's kind of reverse um, gender um, dominance because in any sport, you know, like even ice skating, which synchronized artistic swimming mirrors so much, it started off as two men skating together. You know, in swimming, it was a male-dominated sport. You know, and even now, there's more male athletes. Um, but it is coming around. You see a very strong... Um, like power of female athletes and, you know, and this is just opposite, but I think that it will come around and we will start to see more men doing solos and, you know, they'll add solos at the world championships and then they'll start to add teams combined with men. So it's a, it is a progression and it will take time, but I definitely think it's going to happen. That's good. And do you feel like right now the world of, of artistic swimming is a little more accepting, I guess, um, towards men in, in synchro? Uh, I definitely think that they are more accepting because we all want the sport to um, evolve and progress. And especially now with the rule change, you know, it's opening up this world because people used to always ask, oh, you know, why um, are you called synchronized swimming? You guys aren't always synchronized. And I really think that um, was something that helped the mixed duet because we weren't trying to be synchronized. You know, we were trying to um, – 
co uh, complement each other, you know, rather than being synchronized the whole time. So I think that, um, you know, the sport is evolving and very welcoming and open to changes in the sport, becoming more athletic, athletic and all these different aspects are really helping to open the doors for more men across the world. And if you go to the world championships or you see little competitions, there's always, um, there's a male presence at these events now and it's very inspiring. Yeah, so do you want to talk about, my next question was what, what do you want to see happen next for men in the sport? And I know you guys started today uh, a new campaign on social media. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so um, we started a campaign today called Inclusion of Mixed Duets and hashtag Inclusion of Mixed Duets. And it's just to make our presence known that, you know, we, um, like any athlete, we would love to be included in the Olympic Games. You know, that's a place where it's the ultimate um, inclusion of heart and soul and dreams on a world level. And, it, and it's just an opportunity to show showcase men in the sport as well as show our sport evolving and accepting. Um, and it's a little bit of reverse gender um, kind of discrimination or, you know, like inclusion just because, um, you know, like now you're, you're excluding someone in it. And the Olympic Games was never built around that. You know, it, 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 it was a event that brought the world together, a united world where you would see people working their entire lives for something. And just because a male is in a female dominated sport doesn't mean that they don't have that same passion. Um, so we're just trying to spread that across the world, spread it to the Olympic committee, get it out there that um, people know that there are a lot of men out there that truly have dreams and want to go to the Olympic games and want to be included into the Olympics. So if anyone can spread that around, that would be amazing. Is there a, um, like a deadline or anything that the IOC is going to make a decision on that? I'm assuming it's for Paris, um, but or not. Um, I would, yeah, I think it's it would um, it would be for Paris. I think it's too late, but um, I always heard that a host country could add an event. So maybe in 2021, if the Olympics, I don't think I don't know. Again, I don't know enough about these rules, but um, you know, the sooner that we can get into the Olympics the sooner the sport can grow and the sooner that, you know, it would start to inspire other men to be in the sport because sometimes men don't want to continue in the sport because they don't feel they have a future. Um, you know, so even though they love it, when time comes to move on with their life, you know, they reach that, that peak of their career and they have to move on where this would just add another opportunity for them to continue to be the best athlete that they could be. And um, you may know her, Natalia Vega. I was asking, would you come back <laughs> to Tokyo if it's included? <laughs> uh, if they if they added the um, mixed event in the Olympics, I, I would probably go back. I mean, it's it's a year. I'm still training. I'm still swimming every day. Um, you know, and it's it's another opportunity to you know show men in the sport. So anything that I can do to help the sport kind of evolve, because is this is what inspires me now is to see these young athletes really going after their dreams. Um, you know, so it's, I think it, it's just one more opportunity to help that sport, um, you know, grow and become a greater power in the Olympic games. Mm -hmm. And how, how are things in the U S for men? Do you, do you see that there is growth in, um, and just having boys joining or not yet? How, how is it? Um, there is some growth. It's, it's, it's slower than the females, um, but there is some growth. Right now I'm working with some men on my club, on Santa Clara, and we have um, seven guys that are training. So it's, um, and they're young, and it's really, really cool because, um, you know, I remember at that age, like, you want to mess around and joke around and have fun and, you know, again, that's that innocence of just doing a sport because you love it. They're not thinking about, okay, what music am I going to use five years from now? Or what am I going to use next year to make sure I'm going to try to win? It's not about winning or losing. It's they're there. They're having fun. They're, you know, like they're being little kind of 
you know, misfits. Um, so yeah, so there is a presence of men joining. It is slow. And even in the U S we're trying to push that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, it is, um, it, 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 it is, um, it is happening and it's just, it's going to take some while, but the more people can spread it around and, and even with this little campaign, the more people can get it out there, the more that they see that there is a, a presence of male um, athletes in the sport. Right. Yeah, for sure. I see sometimes like in Russia, there. Oh, hey. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people are saying hi. In Russia, there's <laughs> a lot of little, little ones starting up and it's just like you said, it's yeah. going to take time, but they're there. I mean, right now they're 10, mm-hmm. but they are starting. So exactly. That's already awesome. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, again, the coaches need to feel comfortable with this. Mm-hmm. And um, we need to show them that there is a, it, it is a different way to coach men, but um, to feel comfortable with this. Right now, there's no right or wrong, big hug. There's no right or wrong way to um, coach these guys. They just need to feel welcome, like any other athlete. And then, you know, teach them the basics. But again, don't make them feel like they are just one of the girls. They are their own um, entity in the sport. Mm-hmm. And would you like to see, maybe it's already in the works, but a different set of rules for, for men and mixed duet or, or no? Uh, I definitely think there needs to be different rules because, again, men move differently. Um, the way that we swim is different. Um, and... And it's not just men, it's the event in itself. So if you were to have two men swim together, it's completely different than um, a man and a woman. And if uh, two females swim together, it's completely different. When you have a mixed duet, you're there to complement each other. You're there to show this relationship, whether it doesn't have to be like a a romantic relationship, but it's a relationship that um, showcases two different beings. Mm -hmm. So um, I definitely think because the way that you move around, like say I would carry Natalia or, you know, Conoco, Christina, Christina around the pool, like one of them's tall, one of them's um, short, you know, and you're not there to completely match. You're there to, you know, show a relationship that can, people can relate to rather than being completely synchronized all the time. So doing lifts and connections, this is what um, needs to be judged different. There needs to be requirements, um, and I think almost like the mixed duet technical program right now, you know, there's different mirrored actions and elements that are required. And I think the free program really needs to have those aspects because mm-hmm. the judges, especially if they don't coach a mixed duet, they don't really understand all the little nuances or everything that it takes to have a man and a female swim together, a male and female swim together. All right. Well, I hope that will happen. I agree with you. So hopefully, but it's, I mean, things have already changed. It's since 2015, right? Like, mm-hmm. Things are moving. Yeah, they're, yeah. And they've added different rules, but I really think it's the, the free program that needs to start having rules because if you look at all the routines, they're very different and the way that um, the routines are um, created are completely different too. You know, and it's, it's, it makes it very difficult to, for younger athletes to um, create a routine. And it's very difficult for the judges to, um, to judge a routine because if they're looking at um, two females or two males, they're looking how many spins they can do, how many rockets they can do, how synchronized it can be. But it's, it is a different sport or it's a different event. Um, so they can't just look at hide out of the water um, because – you know, if a partner is shorter, they shouldn't be graded down for that because at that point, it's how they can complement each other with maybe a taller male and a shorter female. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. It would be fun to see all like a male duet on on the big stage one day. I know. Yeah. It happens at the national level uh, sometimes, but it's not not quite. Uh, yet, but we'll get there. Yeah. Well, you know, we. Um, we we have actually an O, oh, three male athletes. We have Atsushi, mm-hmm. Benoit, um, and myself. And um, when we have parts of the routines that have um, – they it showcases um, men at that specific moment. It's such a different dynamic. You know, and no matter how um, – even if it's the exact same move, it's going to be a completely different dynamic. 
So it would be cool to um, see two men swim together because it is going to be something new in the sport and it, and it will happen. So, you know, it's just another way that the sport will grow. Yeah. So to go back a little bit to um, 2015, so you had been retired for uh, about 10 years or so. And yeah. all of a sudden now FINA finally approved um, Mixed Duet to be allowed to compete at Worlds. How, how was it for you when you found out about it? And how long did it take you to make the decision to <laughs> like a millisecond? Uh, yeah, probably about a half a millisecond. <laughs> um, so in September of 2014, um, we were asked if if this event did go into the world championships because there was talk about it, would, would we go back? Um, and at that time, my partner was Christina Lum for so long. Um, and she was pregnant and she was due to give birth in January. So um, even she, without even thinking, she said yes. And Christina Jones was asked because Christina Lum couldn't do both programs. So they told us there was a chance um, that it would happen. And they told us this in September in November, it passed and we were just finishing our show in November. Um, and I'll never forget because we got an email and Christina Jones and I had both finished our show. We had just both taken off our show makeup and walked out to the hallway, you know, and it's just like this, like this emotion that you can never express because you can't believe that something like this had happened when it was still possible. Like somehow by fate, we were all still, in Las Vegas together where we would be able to train, still doing water shows, you know, so it was like this like joy that just came over us. So without, you know, there wasn't even a thought. 100% we were full in and, you know, and then Christina Lum gave birth at, um, in January. And I think it was like January 1st or 2nd. Um, and then she was competing at the world championships seven months later. So, I mean, if that doesn't show a rock star, that's, I mean, she's my hero. That's unreal. Seriously. So, yeah. So, yeah, there wasn't even a thought. The moment they asked us, um, it was a yes. A yes, 250%. Right. And then how did you – what were your emotions when you won that very first gold medal um, in the technical event? Well, that was – it was crazy because, you know, of course everybody wants to win. But to see this um, – the skill of everybody in the – in the event and to think about all the support that we had between our families, you know, my family left, or I left my family when I was 16 years old and you always wonder, okay, was this the right decision to make? Um, do I regret this? Do I, did I lose moments of my family that you can never get back? And this kind of brought everything together and that, yeah, you know, like this really was my passion. This is my dream. Um, you know, so of course we're crying and, excited um, to win the first world championships medal. But, um, you know, I was happy for my coach because she had worked so hard for this for so many years. And, you know, I was happy for the other athletes at the event that we were all in this together. So um, more than anything, it was like extreme joy just because there was years and years and years and years of everyone's perseverance that was finally coming together. That's awesome. Yeah, it's very, very heartwarming. Um, and I had a question from uh, Renaud from Belgium. I think he did your clinic in yeah. Barcelona. Uh -huh. He was asking, what's your secret to having so much energy and all <laughs> <laughs> so um, I <laughs> Probably too much sugar. Um, I don't know. You know, like, um, I wake up every day thinking this is my, my opportunity and um, to be happy and to love what I do. And I really, truly love um, what I do every single day. Mm -hmm. I have great friends. I have great dogs. <laughs> I have great family. Um, you know, so I, I think it's about constantly finding the, um, my heart in everything. You know, like this is a, um, like this time in the world right now is such a sad situation. But at the same time, um, like we were talking about earlier, like, there's so much joy and um, happiness that are coming out of this because people are really finding happiness, you know, at the simplest form, you know, whether it's just opening your window and, 
you know, hearing the birds. Like we're hearing a lot of birds now in Las Vegas and we're in the middle of a desert. You don't always hear that in these big metropolises. So, you know, like it's, um, you know, like I just, I love my life. I love the people around me. So I don't know if I have energy all the time, but, um, you know, I think I, what I feel inside is how I like to express it on the outside. And, you know, I guess that's not really an answer, but, you know, no, I, your mom I love being you, around people. I don't know if you saw that comment. Your mom said that you've had that energy since you were born. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I was always a naughty kid. So I had to run for my mom. <laughs> so that's how I had to acquire energy. <laughs> No, but that was that was a good a good message, and I think, especially like you said, right now it's it can get tough, but finding the, yeah. the positives um, every mm. day it's it's a good way to see it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, all right, let's keep moving. Well, why? Um, so at Del dot VDB asked, "What's your best uh, synchro memory so far?" Oh gosh. Um, there's so many. It, these are the type of questions that are difficult because um, I, you know, like, there's a lot. There's um, the first time we went to France and, um, and I saw another male athlete competing. Um, of course, going to the world championships. Um, you know, like there was actually a time... Um, when Anna Kozlova and I got to go to um, exhibition at the European Championships. And that was a really cool experience because people, we were invited to go there. You know, so um, we might have been their competitors, but at that moment, they wanted to see a new event and they wanted to um, witness this evolution of the sport. So there's things like that. You know, like everyone wants to say, yeah, it was a, that you know, gold medal or whatever. But um, for me, it's really, um, you know, the journey along the way. Like even going into seeing these, like seven young guys on my club in California. Like that, it just makes me so happy that to see them, you know, enjoying what they're doing and having fun and, you know, and misbehaving like any little kid too, because they're any little kid in any little sport you know, that are there, you know, trying to get away with things like we all did. So, um, you know, the, another time was Christina Lum and I went to the Goodwill Games, and that was the first time that a mixed duet can, could compete um, at a, um, a world event. So I think that was one of my best events in, to be on our home turf in the United States. Um, so I know that's like a million different um, <laughs> examples, but... Like, my career is filled with them. Yeah. Having my, my, my mom go to the world championships with me and even my coach, um, D, that she was my first coach. Mm -hmm. So to have that much belief in me and um, to go there. You know, and there's um, – and Rita's online right now, but uh, we used to chat online before we even met each other. So to then to go and see Powell um, – compete and perform and then meet her and see that she was so inspired by the sport and so accepting of the sport. You know, we met for the first time at the world, um, Fina, Fina, um, artistic cup or the, anyway, where people trophy, do maybe? trophy cup. Yeah. 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 You know, so yeah. 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 So to, um, see that and see like such support of her son, like, that was such a great memory of my life because it was like, okay, you know, like, there are people just like me all around the world. Like, it's not just me fighting this battle or, you know, this little kid from somewhere. Like, it's, there really are people and families and coaches and judges everywhere that really are um, loving of the sport and really wanting to, this sport to succeed and this event to succeed. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So again, sorry, it's not like one solid no, answer, but not. you know, it's my career is what has been the best part of this sport for me yeah. because it's given me so much. And when you were, um, so before you retired for the first time, you were doing uh, solos as well. And 
um, Renault was also asking mm. about, um, I don't know if people have seen it, but your heartbeat solo in 2002. Ah, uh -huh. but really? Yeah, it's awesome. You guys should go watch it. Uh, it's oh. um, how did you come up with that routine? And um, did, was it all you or was it also Chris Carver who was your coach or how, how did that routine come about? Um, that routine took a lot of work because um, we wanted to showcase, it was a, um, um, it was a very, we wanted to make it a very artistic routine. Mm -hmm. And so we, we started as, um, okay, we had this idea. We wanted it to be like from the beginning of life to that very first breath to the very last breath that you would take. And so we started studying anatomy and we started um, playing with music and we started watching how bodies move. Um, and we would, you know, like we would spend hours and hours and hours in the pool you know, like, how would a body movement or how would like, um, you know, like a, a spark of energy move from your head down to your toes? And what would you do if you were, you know, if you really was your last breath, how would you fight for that last breath? If it's your birth, how much energy would you have? You know, like we would work with different ways that your body would expand, like if you were breathing, or if you were in pain, or if your muscles were stressing from every bit of energy inside your body so it took a long time and then um trying to create the music that would really go with it you know we had breaths in there and um we had emotions so that routine it, it's one of my favorite routines because we worked so hard on it together to try to really showcase what a human body would look like if you had to put it into like a movement form in three minutes Mm -hmm. So we worked a lot with the music. Chris is incredible with the music and she was very understanding and patient because I would say, okay, I don't like this. I want to try this. And um, what if we overlap this? And, you know, like um, in my last solo, I don't know, it's not anywhere, but it was like my mind. So we had everyone's, we had people um, like my different emotions in my mind. Like it was like Christmas and fear and, um, you know, giving something up and all these different emotions. So she would take this music and we would overlap and try different segments of music because she would never just settle. Like she really wanted that perfect music for that perfect um, feeling during that routine because she not only wanted it to come from you, but she also wanted to invoke that power and imagination and the people watching that performance. Yeah, and that's, was I guess that's also... Oh, thanks. No, no, go ahead. I think that's, well, I think, well, I think that's also what, um, what we really wanted to try to um, have with the mixed duet is to engage people watching. We want them to feel something. You know, when you watch a male, two males or two females swim and they are so synchronized, it is just complete power and amazement that two people can move for so long in such sync. is different than watching just people move as fast as they can, which is incredible in itself. But this is an opportunity for people to, you know, feel something from within themselves. Cool. Yeah, I really like that solo as well. So it's really nice to hear the backstory of it. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it took a, it took a long time and a lot of work, but it was something that was very dear to us. And yeah, I think we, we enjoyed doing it. And I got to actually swim it a lot that year. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah, it's, you know, the more you swim, the, the more comfortable you feel, mm -hmm. um, the more you can hear people's feedback, the better you can become as an athlete, fix your mistakes, obviously get more comfortable, get the nerves out. Cool. All right. And then I had, I got questions about, well, let's move on to your Cirque career. Uh, so you joined Cirque du Soleil in 2004, and I got questions from current national team members in Chile and Switzerland. They're asking, what does it take to be a, a circus synchronized swimmer, and how how did you get into O? Um, so um, O is just one of the most incredible jobs that you can ever have, and it's something that, you know, like you can't do for the rest of your life. Um, so you just have to, you know, strive, just like in sport. Um, as competitive sport, you have to strive to be the best athlete you can be. And you have to do that every single day. So 
I always tell people if they want to try to join Cirque du Soleil, you know, like really study, go to, you know, you can go to their website and see what you have to do, but you know, like anything else, make that dream come reality because it, a lot of times, you know, like we get discouraged and think, okay, it's not going to happen, but you know, persevere and fight for it. And when you know that you've fought and done everything that you can, um, then maybe the outcome isn't what you expected, but you know that you've given it your all. So Cirque du Soleil is always looking for people and they don't always take everyone. But, um, you know, like if that's what people's dreams are, they can write to me. I can try to guide them in the right direction, but really fight for that dream. You know, like that's what I've had to do with the sport. And, you know, of course, Giorgio and Sasha and Pau and Asushi and Benoit and all of us, like, you know, like we are all in this sport together. So whether it's Cirque du Soleil or, you know, the Olympics, it's, it's something that, you know, it's not an easy battle, but that's what makes the success of it all even sweeter because you fought so hard for it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, hopefully they'll get, reach out to you. Um, and then I have another Cirque related question. It's from um, Abby, who was on the U.S. team. She asked, how do you act Abby. Calm on stage? <laughs> um, well, you know, like on stage, I become um, this different character. And it is, this character is supposed to be kind of <laughs> probably what I am now. Well, maybe not what I am, actually, but this like kind of um, very refined person that, you know, still trying to be sensual, even though they're old and past their prime. My char character is called the waiter. The waiter. Um, and I always, yeah, I have this this um, picture of my head and it's even while I swim, but on stage I have this picture of my head of how my body should move. And uh, it's a very sensual way and, you know, and playing with the audience and really reaching out to the audience. So, um, and I know when you're with Cirque du Soleil, there's not necessarily like one star on stage because you're all in this big conglomerate or this big um, collaboration. Um, so you're always trying to support everyone else on stage. So the way I move, you know, I have to move in a way that's going to support my counterparts on stage. And I have one friend, um, he plays a travesty in the show and he's a dancer and we can give so much en energy to each other just with a look, you know, so whether, and it changes every day, you know, we feel, we get a feeling from the audience um, this way. So this makes us react um, this way on stage. And, the next day it'll be completely different, but it can be with one slight gesture, um, you know, in one movement or one eye movement. And then, you know, it's our energy devoting ourselves to the people um, that may be the main focus at that point. So um, to stay so calm on stage, I think it's, you know, like you have to completely um, in, engage into what's going on and know that it's not always you. Like this is a character that you're playing and um, they, people don't know you as a, a human being, but more as a, the creature of the stage. So everything has to be focused on that moment at that time. And you can actually transfer that over even into a competition or creating your routines. Yeah, that was probably, I'm assuming, to kind of bring it into the competition um, pool. Yeah, um, we for got a sure. Question on the live stream from uh, Fernanda. She's asking, when are you coming back to Mexico? Ah, oh, I hope soon. You know, I was there at the beginning of the year this year and um, I met such great people and um, I got to meet my wife's family and it was just a, an amazing experience because, you know, again, they didn't have hours and hours of pool time, but they were still, you know, so motivated and, and again, so accepting of a male in the sport. They brought me down there um, so we could share ideas and share passion. And I think that's what helps our sport grow. So I hope I go back soon. <laughs> I love, I, gosh, I love Mexico. Um, my wife is Mexican, so um, I eat way too much Mexican food. I love spicy food. So <laughs> I hope soon. Well, there you go. I hope so too, when flights start <laughs> Yeah. Mm. Um, let's see I'm getting a few life questions um, how can you be the how can you do the best version of your routine um, because when I do my routine I feel like I'm just doing the movements so I guess how do you um, 
get into your routine better? Do you have a, mm. some sort of mental preparation or anything you do before? Yeah, I think the more that you can do it, um, the more you can start to really feel what that routine means to you. And when you do a routine, try to, um, whether it, it might not always be our favorite music or, um, you know, our favorite routine, but at that very moment, that's where you are in your moment in your life um, right now. So start to listen to music, start to hear little nuances or little things in the music that can start to inspire you. It can be like a ding off in the distance, but you know, like that ding is there for you only. So I think the more that you can step outside of yourself as a person and grow into that, that music as a character or just allow yourself to, um, realize that this is about you. When you go to a competition, people don't want you to fail. They want you to succeed. And that's why people spend so many hours coaching and judging. Um, so, you know, like, I think it takes time and you can sit and listen to your music and, you know, really make that music your own and the movements your own and move in a way, whether it's lying on your floor, or lying on your bed or sitting in front of a mirror and practice different ways that you're moving your body. Like this movement, it may be like a, a fast cr crash, or but how can you move that crash? How can you engage your entire body rather than just sticking an arm out fast? So I think the more that you can um, create thoughts in your head and movements in your head and find ways to make that routine your own, I think the better you'll be at that routine and the easier it'll be to perform for those that are watching. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you for your answer. All right. Mm -hmm. I will. We've been talking for a long time, so I won't like hold you up for much longer. But... <laughs> I have so many places to be. Right? <laughs> my couch, my fridge, my couch. <laughs> Walk my dogs. <laughs> wow, they love it. That's one thing I tell you. My dogs are loving spending this time. Right? right now, they just stare outside during my workouts at night. I have to close the door because they'll come in. And they, the dogs just stare at me like, wait a second, this is 24 hours a day with us. Why are you gone right now? So I just get these eyes staring at me. Come back, come back, come back. So I hope oh, when I go back to work, uh, I have two wine runners, And my one just celebrated his 12th birthday. Wow. And they are just awesome. lovable and happy as ever. And they love spending time with their dad. Oh, <laughs> I bet they love having you home so much. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, they know I give them treats every two minutes, too. So the more they get treats, the more we run around. And so, yeah, it's fun. That's fun. Well, speaking of food, I think I had a fun question. Well, it's from... <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, Hypothetically, Christ. if you were to go to Taco Bell, who would you go <laughs> Of course, Christina Jones, because she'll probably kill me for this. But... Um, Christina Jones, you know, we don't get enough time at work together. So then we have to call each other on our way home. And it's always like, um, we're live talking and it'll say, Hey, one second. Um, and they'll say, okay, yeah, me too. And then we'll say, Hey, can I have blah, blah, blah. And we'll be at Taco Bell at the same time. But one funny thing was <laughs> she stopped to talk about, and they were still open. So she was knocking on the drive through window asking if they were closed yet. You know, and there I am listening to all of this, and, and I'm thinking, oh, I know. I, they were open, and, you know, like they're supposed to be open until we get done late. So, you know, sometimes we're eating dinner at 1 in the morning. So to have her knocking on the window at Taco Bell, um, you know, that just makes my night. And sometimes I go in there, you know, and it's so cheap. I order so many things off the menu, and it's just like – the night of all nights, just enjoying this fast, wonderful food. <laughs> What's your favorite snack or food, I guess? Oh, I love ice cream. Ice cream was my kind of my first solid food given to me by my grandma. Um, and now I've never looked back. I just, I, I was, I used to work at an ice cream store too. So um, I would just sit there for hours and hours and hours. Um, I would just eat ice cream and, try the new flavors, um, make ice cream sundaes. It's probably better 
that I'm not there anymore, but better for me and better for the ice cream store because I'm sure their, their profits went way up. But yeah, I love ice cream. I love, I love to eat bad. Um, when I'm eating bad, I like Pan Express, which is like fast food Chinese. But I, I like eating healthy too. You know, like I, um, I really love cooking. So now I have opportunities. So um, I like to cook. Um, I like baking especially, but I do like cooking and, um, yeah, I like cooking real food too. Quote unquote, real food. <laughs> oh, well, it's probably encouraging for athletes who are watching right now that, you know, you like, you can have a sweet tooth and that's okay. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, like work hard, play hard. So, Wait. you know, I would rather, um, spend a little bit more time working out and, um, eat ice cream every once in a while. Um, rather than deprive myself, you know, because you want to be happy in every aspect of your life, you know, and that's, that's what people say, what gives you energy, you like, you know, there's things that make you happy. So, and things to look forward to. And those are the things that make me happy. Yeah, it's all about balance. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Ice cream is good. <laughs> oh, I love <laughs> All right. Well, one last question. Um, what is the best piece of advice you've ever received? Um, I think the best piece of advice is to, you know, follow your dreams, whether it may be to, you know, get your splits down or to, you know, go to the Olympic Games. It's a, it's a very wide range, but, um, you know, there's nothing strong in your life to follow your dreams. This is what's going to guide you. You have one life. And, you have one opportunity to make yourself happy uh, and you can do whatever's whatever in your power to make you happy. And, you know, dream big, you know, and it's be kind to people because those are the people that are helping your dreams every day. And the kinder you are to people, you know, that the, the love comes right back to you. So, you know, dream big and be kind. And, you know, I think that's, that's the best thing that you can hope for other people and hope to come back for yourself. Oh, I was going to ask if you had any final words, but that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. Thank you so much for taking the time and helping to spread awareness of the mixed duet because, yeah. you know, little by little and friends like you, it's, it's, it's helping not only the mixed duet, but the, um, the whole sport grow, you know, we're all doing this because we love it. Um, and we have passion. We spend a lot of time doing it. So the more allies that we can have in this sport and even onlookers of the sport is going to help us all become better athletes and better people. For sure. And I know I enjoy watching Mixed Duet a lot. So I'm definitely yeah. all about that. Um, and it's good that you guys are starting yeah. a campaign. And it's just actually it's been fun uh, seeing um, mixed pairs that I didn't even know existed that they've been reported. Yeah. And I was like, uh -huh. oh, this country has yeah. mixed duet? That's awesome. Uh -huh. Yeah. And see, and that's what people don't know is that there really are, um, there are mixed what's out there. Yeah. You know, we just have to allow for this to grow and to, um, you know, and of course the Olympic games is just going to make every, um, every event grow because you hear, okay, yeah, I saw so-and-so at the Olympic games and this is what inspired me to join the sport. So this is what's going to happen in the mixed duet when we can finally get into the Olympic games there'll be even more men joining the sport. And, you know, and it's not just about men. There's also the females that say, hey, I want to be in a mixed duet. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I love the sport, and this is the event that I want to do. You know, like, just like in ice skating, there's not, you know, you have your solo uh, females and solo men, but then you have male and females that want to skate together, and that's their passion. You know, so people have different goals and dreams in the sport, and, the mixed duet, like any solo duet or team or combo, um, that can be, you know, their passion in the sport and what drives them to become a better athlete. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's 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 like a circle. I've I've spoken to so many athletes who have all told me they got started in the sport because they saw it on TV or they yeah. saw it at the Olympics, and it's just it's visibility. Yeah. It's all about that. Exactly, you know, and that's what that's that's where inspiration comes from. I always had my heroes growing up. Um, and, you know, and they're inspiring me to be a better athlete, better person. And, and, you know, and now it's our time 
as, you know, older athletes to kind of inspire the younger ones mm -hmm. to go for their, you know, dreams and goals. And so, you know, it's all about payback. Yes, that's cool. Yeah, and I think I'm going to have Giorgio on here one of these days. So awesome. I'm excited to speak to him also. Um, and awesome. yeah, let's keep this going. I'll cross my fingers. Yes, after. definitely. Thank you, you so know? much. Thank you for yeah. everything. Thank you for, for being awesome. here. I hope you guys Oh, my pleasure. Um, yeah, I could speak yes. with you for hours, but you know, <laughs> it's been an hour, so. Uh -huh. Oh, it went by fast. But, right? <laughs> no, that was great. So and if anybody wants to join, you know, like, Anytime anybody wants, has questions, anything, you know, we're always conversing and learning together. So any way that we can all help each other, um, you know, I'm more than happy Bye. to talk to everyone. So, yeah. yeah. And message you for the Zoom workout. Um, oh, yeah. If anybody wants to join. Guys. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, again, it's not nothing professional. It's just you know, to have a little um, companionship during this crazy time. Yeah. Everybody's trying to find a different way to work out. So, you know, if anybody wants to join, I would love to have you. Christina's there. <laughs> sort of. No, it's good. It's, it's, <laughs> it's intense, but it's, I feel good afterwards. So I... Ah, cool. It's, it's good. Cool. And like Perfect. you said, it's fun like, to do it as a group and having someone lead um the thing is yeah. it's good so yeah it. it's much it's better knowing me, that people so. have... <laughs> i don't know if that's a solid point but <laughs> right <laughs> but cool i was saying earlier that so. ethan from australia was um saying hi so ah hey ethan thanks for tuning in you know he's yeah he's one from it was his first world this year and again yeah. you know like we have people from every continent, from 